Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm so excited um, to be, you know, restarting these shows. I took a break because I was traveling for two months in, in North America, but I am back. And so I'm, uh, I'll be holding shows twice a week, you know, usually on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and who knows what, you know, who knows what else, but for, for now, that's what, that's what we're doing. <clears throat> but just, you know, uh, watch your emails if you're um, already receiving my emails. And if not, watch the Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. <laughs> so um, today, like I said, I'm excited to be restarting. We started last week with Brian Rawls was here with us. And today, my good friend, Benjamin Bernstein is here. And I have to tell you, Benjamin's been on our show a couple of times before. And But beyond that, I mean, I have to say that um, I had a session with Benjamin, I have to say maybe a year ago. I don't know. Anyways, I had resisted. I'll be honest. I resisted. I resisted. I resisted. It's like, I don't want to do a session. I don't know what Benjamin is like for a session, but I don't want to do. And then I did it. It's like, oh, my God. It was amazing. I, I couldn't believe. I mean, you know. Benjamin is really talented. Uh, the astrology plus the healing work. I mean, really, really talented. I was, I was like, so happy, <laughs> you know, so pleasantly happy and surprised. So, um, so please do, you know, remember that, you know, whether you're here for the astrology part, because I know we're going to talk a little bit about astrology, or whether you're here for the healing part, just be open to everything, okay? Be open to uh, whatever and all the wisdom that. Um, Benjamin and I will be sharing because you know I never know what exactly is going to come out of my mouth when I when I have these conversations. But Benjamin is here to talk a little bit about how to use these challenging times to awaken more deeply. Oh, and as I'm reading that title again, it's just it's like what it's so apropos. It is so relevant because for a lot of us light workers and most of you who are on these calls, you know, you work with light, you work with energy, you work with spirit. Um, you're being challenged. You might be, you might be challenged at this time. And so we're going to talk about how to use these times to awaken more deeply. And I, I know for myself, I'm doing that for myself because I'm being challenged and I am actually using this time to go deeper and to strengthen my practice and go deeper into my practice and so on and so forth. So for those of you who don't know Benjamin, I'll just tell you a little bit about him. He, a, he does um, astrology. He hosts This Week in Astrology. He's a, he was a Best Astrologer winner 2013 through 2015. And I have to say, you know, he is amazing. I, I, was, so, I was so surprised. So, I don't know why I was surprised, but I was like so happy. <laughs> <laughs> happily surprised um so benjamin does a lot of astrology work he's also a shamanic healer an awakening activator and life coach and so you know if you ever do get it like, we're not offering sessions with the packages this time around but if you ever do decide to get a, an, uh, um, a session with benjamin he combines everything together and it, it's like holistic it's a it's a very holistic approach. Um, and Benjamin's greatest joy is helping others access or deepen their spiritual awakening with his simple, effective invocations for healing and awakening, which I'm sure we're going to use today. And uh, it, it's, they're such a gift and they're so powerful. I'm sure you will all enjoy them too. So um, <laughs> quite the varied introduction, but Benjamin, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here again, Alara. <laughs> and you know, I mean, you know, I'm, you know, when it comes to to introducing friends, it's hard to just read the bio. You know, it's like I can't just read the bio. I have to, I have to really tell you, you know, tell everyone really what the relationship is like. And so, um, for me, you know, I don't. I'll be honest. I don't know a lot about astrology, but Benjamin knows everything. <laughs> so you know, I don't have to know it because Benjamin does know it and when it comes to healing you know um the healing work you know we're all healers right we we are all healers and um we're the ones that actually do the healing as facilitators like benjamin and i are facilitators we hold space we have different processes that we bring to your awareness and to your attention so that you can heal if you so choose but you ultimately are still the healer so benjamin I'm so excited about talking about <laughs> how we can use these challenges to awaken more deeply because as we were talking beforehand, it has been a challenging 
challenging year. So can you talk a little bit about the challenges that we might be experiencing right now? Sure. <clears throat> now, again, I have a limited perspective. I know my own experience and I know I live in Asheville, North Carolina, where there are a lot of conscious people. We're sort of a hub for that. And, you know, I'm part of a group that meets every week to study the law of one channel material and usually 20 people show up and we always do a sharing on the first round and everyone seems to talk, oh my God, this major thing is happening and I'm being so challenged in a certain way. And so I'm here with all these people, many of whom are spiritually awake or, or well on their way, all getting triggered. And then as I work with my clients, whether it's astrology or shamanic healing or life coaching, and I'm hearing all these stories about all this thing that's up for them. So, you know, I have this perspective of connecting with a lot of people and there's a lot of challenge up. And it goes way beyond just what's going on in the sky astrologically, you know, because we are in a, a shifting time where, you know, we're shifting from darkness to light. And, and the nature of that process is that at the end of an era like we're in, um, the dark side makes its last stand mm. and it comes out with full power and it it shows itself as really big and scary and seemingly insurmountable and that's exactly the time when it's going to face its final well not final it's it's it will give way an era of light comes forward for you know thousands of years however long and you know it's all cyclical at some point way in the future the dark will come back and have its day again so <clears throat> it's like a whole cyclical phenomenon so my perception is we are now in that transition period, and that's certainly there's lots of other folks who feel the same way. Um, and therefore, um, uh, our job, if we're awakening people, is to understand that that's part of the process. You know, we're, I assume that most of the people who are on this show are here, you know, they identify with the light, they want to serve the light, they want to awaken. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> that path involves the uncovering and clearing of any darkness within you. And this, in my opinion, works in stages. The first stage is you just work on your own stuff. Yeah. So you're going to say, okay, I've got my own personal wounds, and I worked that for a while. And, and that can be years worth of material right there. At some point, if you get clear enough, and it's what you're here to do, you can then get assigned to start processing for others. And I know I've talked to so many clients who are empaths. They're highly sensitive people, and they feel other people's stuff, and they feel it processing through their own body. And, and my perception is those who are sensitive actually came to do that because, you know, from the highest perspective, we're all one. There was a great sage, sage named Ramana Maharshi in India. Mm -hmm. And one of his followers apparently asked him, what do we do about other people? And he said, there are no other people. <laughs> <laughs> from his perspective, it was just one beautiful being. You know? I love him. I so just absolutely love him. If you're processing for someone else, you know, that's really you in disguise. That's right. the highest so some of us are here to help process for those who can't yet process for themselves. Mm. So I know I'm definitely one of those myself. So the, the key then is to realize I'm kind of like a sponge. So um, if I'm a dry sponge, then I'm going to soak up whatever's out there, whether it's dirty or clean. But if I'm a saturated sponge, then I'm going to be pretty full and I'm not going to pick up as much and I'm going to drip water everywhere. Mm. And the sponge metaphor is a metaphor for awakening the saturation would be from the divine light okay mm -hmm. so you're really bright and shiny and then whatever you do pick up you have so much more light available to transmute and absorb it and in my own experience when i'm transmuting for others it's intense and it's so intense for me my body will literally shake i'll vibrate and it's it's pretty intense physically for me but there's no pain intensity right. doesn't have to equal pain yeah um sometimes it's a little subtler but you know it's i feel it happen okay more of this well i have and to say just, you know when I was, you know, uh, earlier on in my journey, I used to feel a lot of pain, you know, mm -hmm. but for me at that time, it was like proof that I was doing something, right? Mm -hmm. So it was proving that I was doing something. So I would feel the pain as proof that something was happening or that I was doing something. And I used to have that program too, where I was working, working for other people, doing the healing for other people and transmuting for other people. Um, right at my expense, you know, and then it's like, okay, uh, that doesn't work for me anymore. So now, even though I do do that, it's not as, it's not painful, you know, it's just a lot of heat, as some of my clients will tell you, I start yeah. to sweat a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. but that's, you know, so it can shift, it can change, right? 
Absolutely. And that's kind of the, what, I'm, what I'm getting toward is the technique of how to do that in a way that doesn't damage you individually. Okay. So if you're an absorber, if you're a transmuter, that's your nature. Mm-hmm. And, and some people respond to that by, oh, I'm just going to numb out. I'm going to do drugs or alcohol or zone out on TV, food, video games, whatever. I'm going to distract myself. But it doesn't change the fact that you're still absorbing, you're still picking up stuff, you're just ignoring the problem. Mm-hmm. So once you say, okay, I'm, I'm done distracting, I want to deal with this, then you say, okay, this is my nature to, to be really sensitive, to merge with other energies, and some of them will come through me. So I need to set myself up so I can do it properly. So in terms of I need to become an effective spiritual transmuter, I need to become a shaman, I need to become a, an agent of spiritual healing, whatever terminology you put doesn't really matter, it's all the same basic thing. Yeah. So to me, the first stage in this, you've got to get a basic spiritual awakening online. You know, you have to have the conscious experience of your higher self merged with you. And you, what I like to say is this trans, this transcends and includes the personality. The personality doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. My experience is not that the ego gets killed. To me, the ego just gets housebroken, Mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, there's still a place for the ego. The ego has a job to do still, you know? Yeah. I mean, try functioning in 3D without one. You won't have much interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the ego is a, is a tool. Yeah. And if it's a surrendered ego, then the divine can make good use of it. So, you know, I have a very distinctive ego and, and you know, I, I try to refine it and hone it and help it serve the best I can. So the idea is you're still, and, and I should mention, I've tried to give it up. I remember I've done a lot of plant spirit ceremonies, ayahuasca mostly. Mm-hmm. And I remember one ceremony a few years ago where I was just, I felt I was totally merged with the divine. I was all in there. And I begged God, I said, please just take away my free will. Make me your servant. Take away even the possibility of me wanting my free will back. Just take me, take me, take me. And it's the only time in my life the thunderous voice of God came right back and it said, no. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, maybe at some point uh, a full surrender like that can happen, but I have not been able to attain it myself. Right. So my own situation is I still have to keep making that choice. Benjamin still has to keep choosing surrender and compliance. Mm. And Benjamin can choose not to if he chooses at any point. You know, I can't imagine what he wouldn't, but that's that's the choice. So free will is the law down here, and most of us are, are in that paradigm. So... I'm running on a few tangents, so I apologize. I'm going to come back to my main point. So here we are, you know, sensitive. We're here to serve in the light, and we have to be a capable instrument. And if you're just an awakened ego, you've got very limited tools. And your egoic tools are not going to work very well with the sorts of energetic phenomena you're hitting because they work from the spirit level. So you have to get up to speed and become conscious as spirit. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned my invocations because I'd like your people on the show to experience this for themselves and maybe mm-hmm. have a little awakening of their own while we're here. By the way, I need a, a reference. What is the rough duration of the show going to be? How long do we have? An hour, an hour and 15. Yeah. Okay. All right. That gives me a sense of how to pace. Thank you. Um, but basically, once you have an embodied awakening, what that means is your higher self is merged with your physical body. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, it transcends and includes the ego. And, and the key distinction that happens once this locks in is you don't have mental chatter and you don't have challenging emotions when you're fully in this embodied awakening. And it's effortless. It's not like you have to keep it going. It just stays. Mm-hmm. And you get it by literally asking for it with an invocation and just surrendering and passively letting it come in. And, and the trickiest part for most people are doing this, and I've led several thousand through it, <laughs> and for most it works really well, mm-hmm. is you just have to go fully passive once you've asked for it and let it come in. And, and there's four things that are true when you're in embodied awakening. The first is that there's, in your daily routine experience, there's a lot more harmony, flow, ease, and grace. Um, everything you're responsible for, you do more responsibly. Um, instead of having to figure things out mentally all the time, more and more you just know what to do intuitively and more of what you do is blissful. Yeah. So those are the qualities that I've been able to verbalize around what is embodied awakening and what does it feel like. You know, technically it's simply the higher self or light body or soul being 
fully integrated into the physical body. Those two bodies are in perfect alignment. Now they, once you do it, I mean, it's not, for many, it's not a permanent experience. The, you know, it's something that happened like, but I may drift out of sync and then there's mental chatter and challenging emotion again. But then you just call it back and it, it quiets down again. Mm -hmm. So this, this, if you haven't had the experience, it may sound too good to be true. But once you've had it, you really don't want to settle for less. And, and why would and you not want it, right? Even you describing it, right, right today, right now, why would you, why would somebody not want it? Well, I, I wouldn't speak for anyone else, but for me, I can't imagine why I wouldn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your sole purpose is to go through a lifetime and have no awakening at all, in which case it would be a very bad idea. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, and that's the thing is like, because we are going through some challenging times right now, right? If, if there's, if we can get more ease, use, you know, have more tools that we can use to, mm -hmm manage our way through you know why not right and so somebody asked natalie was asking earlier she said why was i resisting having a session with you oh it's no secret i mean it's like i i'm i'm a shaman right as well but my shamanism that i do is very silent and very it's very different than the way benjamin does it and so i i resisted because like oh i don't know what it's going to be like because he doesn't do shamanism the way i do it mm -hmm. you know it was silly you know but um, but we, we did we did a little bit of shamanism on the in the session, but yeah, that was the only resistance. It was my, my own thing about well, I do shamanism this way, and Benjamin does shamanism another way, and I'm just not sure if I you know want to do it that way. Right. <laughs> That's what that what? was. Because uh, let us, I'm being called to speak about entities a little bit because yep. this is really central to what's going on. Mm. And um, <clears throat> so my, my sense, I, I like to use an image for the awakening and healing process. And this is only a metaphor. It's not literal reality, but it gets the idea across. So at the core, I believe we're each God. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's nothing but God anywhere. God entertains itself by pretending to be different things and different people. So here we are at the core, pure divinity. And that feels like ecstasy, bliss, and euphoria. It feels like harmony, flow, ease, and grace. That's all we really are at the core. Mm -hmm. No. Then as we incarnate and go through incarnations, <coughs> we have unhealed wounds and traumas. Each one of these puts a little dark layer around that core. And these layers build up to form a sort of onion. The human us is on the outside of the onion looking in toward the middle. We may have some perception of our divinity, but part of it's blocked by those layers of pain. So in a very real sense, the way to the light is through the darkness. It's you doing your shadow work. It's you when you have a catalyst and a challenging emotion or a physical sensation arises, having a tool that quickly and efficiently clears that once and for all. So, so my own experience of the awakening path is not just all unicorns and rainbows and fairies. You know, that'd be lovely, but that isn't my experience. Mm -mm. But what it is is, you know, my daily reality is ecstasy. I literally wake up and I'm already in what most people would consider an altered state and it never leaves. So I'm in this incredible ecstasy all the time. It used to be a few years ago, I can only get here by like doing a hardcore ayahuasca ceremony and temporarily getting that. Mm -hmm. But one nice thing about the plant spirit work is it introduces you to a new level and then you can stabilize it on your own, you know, the whole idea is, you know, eventually you'll just be able to hold it naturally and you're simply open the door through a means like plant spirit work. And there's other ways to get there too, certainly. Um, so now I'm in this lovely state and yet I'm still having this triggering. I've peeled enough onion layers that that light is relatively bright to me compared to when I started. And I'm sure there's much more brightness available I can't even conceive of yet. But, you know, you, you basically, you, you say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to do the shadow work. Mm -hmm. And and again, some people shy away from that because they may have had really traumatic or difficult experiences, like in a ceremony or something, and I just don't want to do that again. That's too much. And the lovely thing about these invocations we're going to be doing is, oh, someone just wrote, bring it on. <laughs> That's lovely. The lovely thing about these is they don't give you too much. Yeah. The nature of these invocations is they're self-limiting because of the phrasing. For example, when we call for awakening, the shortcut for that is simply 
maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. We're calling for healing. It's maximum healing that serves highest good, please. And, and the highest good is not served by overwhelm. Right. And so in the, in the many years and the thousands of people I've led through this, no one has ever reported overwhelm. Not too much <laughs> bliss, not too much pain. Mm -hmm. Like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it's just right. <laughs> mm, no, it's very nice. Yes, absolutely. Very, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make that point that this process done solo is self-limiting and it's safe. It's not going to be too much. Right. Your higher self is running the whole show. Your higher self sees everything that's going on. It's only going to give you what you're ready for. And when you do your first stages, you know, it'll just be, you know, just that little bit of healing that you can handle, that little bit of awakening that you can open to a little bit. As you get more conscious, more capable, more skillful, it'll give you stronger hits of awakening, it'll give you stronger healing experiences because you can handle them better. Mm -hmm. So like anything with experience, you become more masterful at it. But the whole premise is that the, the it's an in, I call it an invocation because I, the ego, invoke my higher self to help me and the higher self does everything. Right. So you know, that that's as I'll when I teach this I'll I'll emphasize that your ego stays wholly passive and the divine does it for you. So I'm 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 wanting to put a bow on this the basic discussion we've been having, which is things are intense. We're in a transition from dark to light. When that happens, the dark puts on its last stand. It looks unstoppable. It looks overwhelmed. That's, it tries to scare us into not doing this. Okay, <laughs> but if we're life workers, we're here to do light, and our prime job is being awakened ourselves. Yeah. And even if you are just sitting there alone in a room and you never interact with another human being, your awakened presence is of immeasurable benefit on the planet because your vibration is in the web of reality and it is radiating awakening. And you just sitting there, even on your own awake, is helping other people. That's just the basic level of service. Then once you're awakened, of course, most people get intuitive guidance to go do stuff and start serving. And then you become more actively involved in your your spiritual work so there and i don't believe there's any particular mandated path for a, a person who's really on this self-guided path because each path is unique there's no human you turn to what should i do next ultimately just wow i'm self-guided and i just get my my guidance from within and choose to act on that so of course right now as soon as you said that you know about this being self-guided people are going to ask but i'm not hearing the messages i'm not getting i'm not getting the information i'm okay. not getting the guidance in that case, you turn to people like Alara or to me who can access your higher self for you because we have that openness. And, and if we're really doing our work in the highest way, in my opinion, we're not going to hook you into having us be your permanent guide. We're going mm -hmm. to say, okay, I'll, I'll give you this answer for now, but I want to help you hook into your own guidance. Yeah. A real guru, a real teacher of any kind is one who helps the person awaken for themselves so they don't need the teacher anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and even today, what you're going to teach us, it, it's the, um, we can use that for ourselves afterwards. Oh, that's the whole point. Yeah. It's, it's a self-help tool. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, it, now I, I used to believe the technique alone was, you know, fully powerful. What I have learned since is that people do have, typically speaking, a more potent experience when I lead them through it. Because to have, it's, it's you know, I'll, I'm not a guru and I don't pretend to be but I'll call it the guru principle. Why do people go sit in a guru's presence? Mm -hmm. Because the guru is awake and they are radiating awakened energy and it is simply easier to be in that state when you're in the field of someone who's holding the consciousness you're striving to achieve. It's, it's, it's you know, the, the harmonic resonance, yeah. okay? So basically if I'm in embodied awakening and I'm leading someone into that, then I'm sort of helping lift them up just by the energy I'm holding. They're in the field of embodied awakening to a degree already from another person, and it just makes it easier. So, so that's why having a real life human lead you through it. Now, secondarily, if, if you're following that person on a video or on a recording, audio recording, their energy essence is still there mm -hmm. and, and can lift you up also. So that's the beauty, you know, the, the ease program I do, for example, every week, you know, we always archive the recordings and, you know, the people report, wow, my energy experience is just as strong in the recording as if I'm live. Yeah. So, so you know, the, the essence of the teacher can be held in a recorded medium because it's all still juicy in the Acacia records where all that is stored. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, you know, sometimes, you know, some of my clients can't uh, join my live group 
classes because timing, right? And they're like, but I really wanted to be there live. And it's like, but it's on the, you can still, you know, listen to the recording. You can watch the video. It's the, it's exactly the same. And they're like, no, 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 but I want I really wanted to be there live. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, well I'm good, but you know, I, I really have, it surprised me when I started getting that feedback on my own program because you know what? Well, they're having as juicy an experience. And these are people who've done it live and they've done the recordings. Yeah. So. Exactly. So, so it's, it's just as effective, you know, afterwards. So, so basically what Benjamin and I are saying that even afterwards, um, if you watch this again, if you're not, if you're not live and you're, and you're watching this and if you are live and but you want to watch it again, it'll be just as potent then as it, as it is now, or will be now. <laughs> and I, I'm going to add something that I, that I don't hear a lot of other people talk about, which is, when you do this on a recording or like or yours or mine or anyone's processes you know you should really act as if you're right there in the room with the person with the same level of attention and respect mm -hmm. because i actually say this when i lead a process and i'll just say it here for the rec so your people know i recommend that if you're going to do this process whether you're live now or on the recording afterwards please give it your full 100 percent attention and here's why you are co-creating it no matter where you are in time and space if you're hearing this five years from now, you are actually influencing the experience of the people who did it live. Yeah. You know, in this in this yeah. level that Ra would call um, time space, there is no passive future. It all happens in real time. So just know that my process, yours, anyone's process, if you're coming to it with full attention, full you know participation, that's the only thing you're doing, you will be not only having the best experience yourself, you'll be supporting others forward and backward in time. And likewise, if you come with inattention, you're chatting, you're driving, you're doing other stuff, you're actually degrading the experience of everybody else hmm. because your inattentiveness is also going into that. Field. Right. So, and yeah, the remember, whole multitasking thing for yeah, sure. It's a yeah. co-creation. So, so when we do our process, I will, I can't enforce it, obviously, but I do request, please just do this while we're doing it. Yeah. And you, you and everyone else will have a better experience. Awesome. Thank you. So there was a question, oh, or yeah, uh, I guess it's a question from Natalie about how to let go of something and uh, an idea or a belief that she's had for so long about wanting mm -hmm. to die. Um, I'm assuming mm -hmm. the, that's the gist of it, right? Okay. Um, so she's, so. I can read it myself. Let's see. Thank you. So should I just read it out loud? <laughs> so have done my data work. Um, Go ahead. Let me just read. It's from Natal, right? Yeah, Natalie. She says, I've done my shadow work since 1988, yet a couple of years ago I became aware of the belief decision, I want to die, that I implanted as a child when it became too painful in my then six-year-old self to deal with the abuse. When this old belief came to light, <coughs> it became apparent that it was why I've never really tried, I've never really thrived or been passionate. I've tried many different ways to release the belief and have not had success. I'm out of ideas how to let go of it. Okay. All right, well, I do actually have a suggestion, okay? Um, the first, um, if you're familiar with the work of Byron Katie, which is a magnificent process, first, the thought comes up, I want to die. So you would first ask yourself, is that true? And if, if you say it's yes, then you ask the deeper question, can I be absolutely sure that's true? Is there even the smallest part of me that does not want to die? And if that's so, then you say, who would I be without that belief? Can you imagine yourself without the desire to die? Just imagine it for a moment. And if you can, then that alone can create a energetic breakthrough. And there's other, there's other processes. I don't want to go into that as the main process, but if you go to, if you Google the work of Byron Katie, her process is right up there with the four questions and the turnarounds. But that's, mm -hmm. that's a start. The, the core thing I'm getting to is you don't have to believe something just because the belief arises. I mentioned entities earlier. They, they offer thoughts, okay? Yeah. So, you know, a thought, basically, you are not responsible for the first arising of any thought or emotion in your field. That's beyond your control. So basically, as a light worker, the lighter you get, the more you attract the attention of the darkness because they want to neutralize you because you're working against their cause, okay? So just be aware, that's why it's not all fairies and rainbows. The more bright you become, the more you attract the dark side's attention. And that's also how you grow. They are, I just put a post up about this on my website. Um, and uh, I, I just want to reference the title in case people want to go back to it because it specifically addresses this in more detail than I'm going to give right now. 
um, hang on a sec, the post is called The Dark Side, Your Adversarial Ally. Mm. <laughs> And the whole point is that's how we grow. And this is covered also, I'm going to tangent slightly here, in the law of one material I mentioned, which I adore, it's the best explanation of reality and why we're here that I've ever read, all free online at lawofone.info if anyone wants to get into this channel material. Basically, apparently, when we were in an earlier version of our universe, we humans came in and it was all service to other people. You know, we have service to other, which is I want to help folks through service to self. I just want to control and dominate and manipulate. Okay. And for a while, they just had service to other people and they stagnated. They were having a great time and there was no reason to grow because it was like paradise. Mm -hmm. And then, but this, but the, the, the creator says, oh my God, they're here in third density. There's four more densities to go. that are even more wonderful. You're hanging out in third and you're not progressing. What can we do? How can we move these people along? So they discovered by introducing an alternative polarity service to self, those who were controlling, manipulated, lying, cheating, just wanted to dominate. And, you know, we can probably think of a person like that who's in the news <laughs> a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are the ones who catalyze us. So as we light workers service to other people go along, we will be hit by a service to self counterpart at the appropriate level. The test is never more than you can handle, folks. Don't worry about that. You know, the biggest kahuna is not going to roll out when you're starting out. You're going to be met with a a counterpart who is of a comparable level and that you can master. Okay, you're never, that's the game is, is rigged very carefully so that you're always given an appropriate test, rigged in a good way, all right? So here you are, you're met with a challenge and you have to draw on more research. You have to go to the next level of your ability instead of just cruise. And so these, these dark beings, these service to self adversarial allies are how we grow. And each, and we're always, temp, we're always offered just like in Star Wars, you know, what was it? Then Darth Vader and the Emperor talking, if he could be turned, he could be a powerful ally, mm -hmm. right? So they'll always try to turn you first. You know, if you're, if you've got strong light, then they want you on their team. Right. And your job, if you're a service to others, is to keep holding to your path of service to others. And any, any, anything you got, an old wound, psychological weakness will get stimulated and turned over to see if you want to, you know, turn or stay on the light path. And, and I twice in ceremonies have been offered the dark side, you know, and, and the divine didn't care. It needs workers on both sides. And I, I am for the light this time. I'm not interested in working for the dark side. So I stay here and I'm tangenting all over the place. Let me get back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I just want to say to, of... to, to Natalie really quickly, um, you know what you're what you're sharing. Just because you you implanted that idea of that belief yourself, still does not mean that you have to follow through with it, or that you can't change it now, right? Or that you or that you even have to accept it, okay? Right. Um, and then and then you know to be totally vulnerable, you know this. Like I said, I was saying this year has been really challenging, and in May I wanted to die, you know, and I I, I told God I said I can't do this. I don't want to be here anymore. But then I gave, uh, you know, I said, but if, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, so then, you know, things shifted. But, you know, it was a, it was touch and go, T you know, and it's like, what the, what, you know, what the heck, you know? So, you know, it, uh, it's, it's been a challenging, challenging year. And this is when you, you use every tool in your toolbox. And trust me, I was, I was using every tool in my toolbox. I called up so many of my spiritual friends and and teachers and counselors and had sessions you know and you know just you know to be totally transparent with all of you i paid for the sessions i didn't just get them for free just because uh, they're my colleagues i paid for them you know and so because i wanted a change in my life you know something was going on and like you know obviously i didn't really want to die but that it was so strong right so um you know, I, I, I totally feel for you, Natalie. I, honestly, I, I, I really, really, I really do. And I'm glad you're reaching out. And please do take a look at the work of Byron Katie. I didn't do that. But that is a wonderful, wonderful resource. Okay. So thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me, uh, I, I actually had a point I was circling around to. And, and I'm glad you spoke, though, because, you know, I, I personally have not had the desire to die in this lifetime. So you were much better appropriate to speak to that just now than me. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, but basically, I'm saying that may not be your thought. Mm -hmm. 
it could be again let me let me explain how thoughts infiltrate into so so as a light worker we're constantly being given we'll call them invitations from the dark side okay the way they'll do it is they'll first implant a thought the thought arises and it's a dark thought it's a thought that will lead you into negativity or a less than desirable path from the light perspective and if you're if you're awake enough you're the witness oh here's this thought and i can choose okay not my flavor of thought i turn my attention elsewhere and that thought just falls off and dies but if you so oh, that's oh that thought oh that's intense Ooh. and you you sort of start playing with it and, and thinking about it you just open the door to it mm -hmm. and then if, you, if the thought then starts generating emotions in you especially challenging emotions fear anger whatever then so the first level out beyond spirit is the is the mental body okay so if, he, if it got the mental body access, then it'll go for emotional body access. And then if you start getting emotional about it, now it's in that level. And the next level in is your physical body. So if you get a strong enough emotional response, then it soaks into your body itself. And that's where disease and illness begin to go. So if you don't want to pick up negative thoughts, such as I want to die, et cetera, then you need to be awake enough to be the witness of your own thinking. Mm -hmm. And, and therefore, that's, that's one of the core benefits of having a basic embodied awakening. Most people, the thought arises, that's my thought. They identify completely with every thought that arises. And they don't realize that these thoughts are being implanted externally and given the opportunity to penetrate if they pay attention to it. But no thought has to come in if you don't give it energy. So, so just be mindful as that thought arises, I wanna die. So, so here, let me also speak, there's two ways to work with this. One is if you're just in everyday consciousness and you have to keep your attention on something other than your own healing process, then that thought arises, you simply turn your attention back to what you're doing. But when it's healing time, then you give it your full attention. And here is how I would use my own process if I had that thought and wanted to be clear of it. Okay, the thought arises, I want to die, okay? So I would first notice, okay, what am I experiencing in terms of a feeling in my body? What emotion is that bringing up? What is the physical sensation that's arising? And that's how you know where it is in your body. You're gonna feel it somewhere in your field, okay? So, okay, let's say, okay, that's in my belly. I feel it right there in my solar plexus. I wanna die right here, okay? So now you say, okay, now I, the ego, am not capable of healing as myself. I would have done it already. I've been working on it my whole life. I haven't done it yet. So I need a more powerful healing system. So I'm gonna have my higher self do it for me. So I've, I've identified where it is in my body and I say to the higher self, maximum healing that serves highest good please. And I relax into either passive breathing, which creates a broad spectrum of healing on many levels and, and dimensions. Or if I've got that one thing up that's dominating my attention and demanding attention, then let's say uh, it's right there in my solar and I, oh, we wanted to die is right there then i will just place my attention exactly in the center of that and feel it completely with no filter now this when you first do it seems scary because there's this oh my god if i put my attention there it's going to overwhelm me and take me over okay well i got news for you guys it's as present as it's going to be it's already there it's already in you and nothing's going to happen that isn't already there <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's as bad as it's going to be already so you may as well go and take care of it. The amazing thing is when you place your attention exactly in the center of the challenging phenomenon with no filter and 100% attention, it actually does not overwhelm you. It, it's a, because the part of you witnessing is actually your higher self, just to give you a, a spoiler there. So you're fully attentive. I'm fully right here with the pain or the discomfort, whether it's physical or emotional. And your job is just to be there with it. You are, you are its witness. What's really critical here is you're not trying to fix it from your ego. Mm -hmm. This is super critical because you, you've said maximum healing that serves highest good please. You've requested your higher self and whatever spiritual allies it brings in to do this for you. Okay. Then if you're doing the simple focus tool of just simple attention, you are pointing the divine exactly where you want them. Energy follows attention. When my attention is fully on that uncomfortable area, then that's like shining a light right there. Come here, guys. This is where I need you. And then what happens the vast majority of the time with the people I work with is within a minute or two, sometimes even faster, 
they start to feel an energetic change. It may start feeling really dense and clotted and thick and, and whatever, but it starts to soften and sometimes energy starts radiating out into space or energy starts flushing out the hands or the feet. It starts to clear. Layer by layer, it starts flushing out or sometimes it goes entirely. So it's a very simple tool. And so basically in your case, if you say, wow, I have this feeling of wanting to die, again, go to how, where's, where in my body do I feel that? Where is the discomfort in the body as a result of that thought? And then you do healing. You, in this case, would probably want to put your attention in that area of the body because it's going to be so intense and just witness. And that will bring the divine and layer by layer, it'll start flushing off. One, one addendum I want to put on here is there's no mental component. This is a transmental healing. So one of the things you do is you just give your complete attention to the feeling, or if you're doing breath, you do just the breath, and you ignore all thoughts. You don't repress them. In, this, in my system, distractions will come, and you don't repress them. You simply allow them, and you just let them be in the background. A, a thought in this context is an uninvited guest, and we are not required to pay attention to uninvited guests. We then return our attention back to our focus as soon as we realize we're distracted. You just keep coming back. You do the best you can. And the more you hold attention in the breath or in that focus area, the divine comes in and peels it out. And you don't have to know what it is. You don't have to know what got there. You don't have to know what was the exact wound or catalyst that caused me to want to die. And, and when things flush, one of two things will happen. Sometimes it's an anonymous flush. Like last night, I did some intense healing work, and for about three hours, I was shaking and vibrating and flushing all kinds of stuff out of me, and I never got an image, never got a thought. It was just stuff leaving. Mm. I didn't need to know, so I was not advised. Other times, I've had healings, and a thought or image pops in, this is what this is about, and it left, and then I was able to consciously clear it, and I, I have no preference. You know, my mind doesn't need to know. I'm just happy to have that bad energy gone. So that's a tool that you might try, Natalie, if you haven't already. And if that's helpful, then, and that, that general principle works for any, any disharmony, no matter what the context. Mm -hmm. if, there, if there's a challenging emotion or a challenging sensation in the body, that tool is helpful for a lot of people. So even the failure to thrive, you know, so but when you think about the failure to thrive, that it's an energy, right? So where is that in your body, right? And you still, and you can do the same, same process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, anything that's negative, um, Again, you, there's, there's the awareness of the, of the challenge. And, in, and again, even if you don't have a sense of where in the body it is, you can still do the healing invocation because your higher self knows exactly where that thing's. It's somewhere in your field. Right. Okay? Yeah. So, so even if you can't identify it, then you just relax and call it in and rest in passive breath awareness. And the divine, which does know all this, will go to the areas it is and start taking out later and later just as, as rapidly as you can without getting overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll mention one thing too. You can do this healing invocation even if you're feeling fine. You can, I feel 100% great. And you sit down and you do the healing invocation and that next layer is already queued up and the divine will come in and flush it up and stir it out. You can do them all day if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this might be kind of like a preventative kind of thing every day, a daily preventative kind of ritual. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good, you know, it's just like, um, it's like if you drive every day on a dusty road and your windshield gets dusty. Every day you want to wipe the windshield and clean it off. It's mm. the same kind of idea. You know, we live, especially these days, in a very polluted energetic environment. There's a lot of really nasty energy out in the air. It's, you know, here in the U.S., for example, it's it's the most toxic political, political atmosphere we've had in my lifetime. Okay, <laughs> There's a lot of service to self out there stirring up a lot of anger and hatred and negativity. And, and let me, can I speak briefly to that before we go into our process? Sure. Okay. Understand folks that if you, in response to a service to self action, have the response of anger or hatred or fear, then you are feeding energy to the dark side. Okay. So in other words, like if, if someone, a politician who's a nasty person does something that outrages you, your anger energy in the invisible world is feeding that person energy and you're making them more powerful. And this also involves in a person, a person causes you to become angry. Guess what? 
their dark entities are having a smorgasbord off your anger. They're getting fed and getting stronger. Metaphorically, it's like if it's a Godzilla movie, he's rampaging through Tokyo and they're firing laser beams at him. Every laser beam makes him bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please understand if you're getting angry or negative emotions are arising and you're doing the best you can, that's okay, all right? But when you become conscious of how the whole thing works, you can make a different choice. But again, it's much easier to make that choice not to go into negative emotions if you're at a basic awakening level. If you're not there, then the emotions kind of run the show and you're not really controlling the thoughts and you're more reactive. Once you're awake, you become more of a master of the situation and you have the big picture and it's much easier to make a conscious reaction instead of just having a, a gut level response or vice versa. You, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. You have a choice over your, your energetic response to something instead of it just happening on autopilot. Right. Okay. And, but so. unfortunately for most you know, for most people, we're just automatically reacting. We're not really even conscious of what we are uh, broadcasting out, right? Well, what we're mm -hmm. thinking, what we're feeling. That's true of know. most people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so and, and if you're in that cycle, then you're suffering. It's almost the definition of it. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to suffer anymore, you have to become conscious. You have to have at least a base level awakening so that you can start making conscious choices see those old patterns operating and begin to shift them through conscious, you know. Yeah, it's about being aware, right? Being aware of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions as they're coming up and then choosing what to do with them, right? Right. And, you know, I'm giving tools today and we'll do a process here in a moment, but any tool that works is a good tool, folks. If mm -hmm. I offer my stuff here and you already have or later find a tool that works better for you, drop mine like a hot potato. Use the <laughs> one that works best. <laughs> Because we're all different and we all respond to different th stuff. That's why there's so many great tools out there because there's something for everyone. Yeah, so absolutely. Right what I'm doing, great, and use it unless you find something better. Yeah, I always say, you know, if what I'm saying or what I'm sharing resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, leave it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's fine, right? And, you know, sometimes stuff works for you and other times it doesn't. So choose what does and then come back to, come back to it later on and see if it still resonates or not, you know? Yeah. So. And remember, different tools for different levels. A tool that worked well for you at one phase, you may outgrow that tool and get a more diverse or subtle tool. Right. So, so that's why I don't make definitive commitments to any one path or tool forever. I say, okay, I'll use this as long as it's the best tool I got or the best path I have, but I will, I'll drop it the moment it becomes clear that there's a different path or a better tool for me. Yeah. Or if it's not working for you anymore, you know, then it's time to change and look for right. something else. So yeah, awesome. So um, do you want to do the, the process now first? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, and, um, and let me just make a note here, whether you're live or on the recording, the amount of time this takes is largely up to you guys. I can do this stuff really fast, but I'm gonna be, believe it or not, I'm gonna be tuning in, not only to the folks on the live call, but everyone who's doing it later on the recording. So and as so I said earlier, I was just gonna so, say, if you're driving, you know, at all, or or operating a machinery of, 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 of some some sort, please take a pause, you know, or do this later. Yeah. yeah, come back if you if you can't give it your full attention now. We actually do request, you know, either get off or pause and come back to the recording later when you can give it your full attention. It'll be a blessing for both you and everyone else. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so um, what we're about to do is an invocation cycle that for many people it takes them into that state of embodied awakening. If you already have embodied awakening, it can take you deeper. So I invite you now to close your eyes. And again, the more everyone listening to me at this time, whether you're live or on the recording, will get through this faster if you give it your full attention. So please close your eyes and become aware of your whole body at once. Just feel the whole thing. And notice how much do you feel like a being of physical form and how much are you aware of that part of you that's energy, prana, chi, current, heat, tingling, etc. Just feel what's going on. And don't try to change it. This is your baseline. This is your starting point. Just notice this is where I'm starting. Later, we'll check back to this to compare. And, um, and now we're going to do the first invocation which is for maximum light and divine consciousness that serves highest good. You're gonna be speaking directly to your higher self and passively receiving what it does for you. So 
Repeat after me now out loud if you can and silently if you must. Spirit that I am, please saturate me with the maximum light and divine consciousness that serves highest good. Starting now, thank you. This or something better. Now release the words and become aware of your breathing. Your attention now is strictly on passive breath awareness. So don't control the breath, just let it come and go and notice where in your body do you feel it most easily? Is it your nose, your head, your throat, your chest, your belly? Just notice where do I feel breath easiest and rest your attention gently there. That's going to be your focus, and that's going to let your divine do these things for you most efficiently. A few pointers. As you do this, please do not use any effort or willpower to try to make anything happen or stop anything from happening. Please do not deliberately visualize or imagine anything. Just feel your breath passively. When you become distracted, that's okay. Do not fight the distractions or try to change them. Let them be exactly as they are. But they are uninvited guests, and you are not required to pay attention to them. Therefore, as soon as you become conscious that you're distracted, which simply means my attention is no longer on my breath, then you gently come back to your breath, very persistently, very gently. If the distraction remains in the background, that's okay. There's room for both of you. You don't fight them, you just keep choosing breath. Gently, persistently. So do that now, feel the breath. And what I, in guiding you guys, I am feeling in my body the general energy of what's happened to everyone. It's getting really bright. So Alari, you've got a very conscious crew here. Congratulations on your wonderful listenership, viewership. And wow, my aura is getting really big, really fast. So it lets me know if people are really getting this very quickly. Now, it could be, as we go through this, you're going to have a different experience than the one I'm describing, which is perfectly fine. So if you're getting a different experience, your divine is giving you a customized experience that will serve you even better. So just keep resting. But if a different experience arises, then don't fight that. Just keep coming back to breath and let the experience be what it is. You may get a customized experience. It happens sometimes. Most of us, however, will go on this track. So just notice your, we call for maximum light and divine consciousness based on what I'm feeling. Most of us at least are feeling very radiant and very bright, which means we're ready for a second invocation. This is to be one with the absolute peacefulness that you are. So I invite you now to this invocation. So please repeat after me if you wish. Spirit that I am, please make me one with the absolute peace that I am. To the greatest extent, that serves highest good. Starting now, thank you. This or something better. Ooh, that's feeling good. Okay, on this invocation, we choose a different focus. We let the breath go, and we focus on the feeling of peacefulness itself. So please just notice whatever peacefulness you're feeling, however minimal or strong it is, just notice whatever peacefulness you're feeling, and give that your full attention. Again, no breath awareness here. We're just focusing on the feeling of peacefulness. This peacefulness is intelligent divine energy. It knows you're paying attention to it, and it's very grateful for that. It's rewarding you actually by making the peacefulness stronger. So to be clear, you are simply passively feeling whatever peacefulness there is, but because the divine is acting, that peacefulness is getting stronger. So just rest in that awareness of increasing peacefulness. Completely passive, again, doing nothing on your own to try to make it any stronger. Just being with whatever it's doing on its own. Just feeling that peacefulness. 
Oh, nice. Okay, so based on what I'm experiencing, most of us are now feeling very light and floaty. Um, you're feeling like a being of energy. So um, please notice right now, are you experiencing any mental chatter or challenging emotion? Or is it just peaceful? If there's no mental chatter or challenging emotion, then congratulations, you have merged with your higher self. And not everyone experiences this exactly the same way, but the basic parameters are definitely, if you're fully there, there is not mental chatter, there's not challenging emotion, it is peaceful. And for some people, that's all they experience. Others have a more definitive and, and vivid experience of being the being of light, of being the higher self or the soul with, with details filled in. But whatever your level of, experiences just if you got the basics no mental chatter no challenging emotion peaceful and effortless in fact let's test that now just by dropping all effort just be for just a moment again based on what i'm feeling most of us are quite stable in the field we are awake as the higher self at least at a basic level so take one last moment to feel this part of you my understanding, this is the part that created your human self. Somewhere down the road, your human self will die, and you'll be this fully again. This will then go on, have its past life review, and go on to whatever's next. So, you know, this is the real you that goes on and on and on and on. For all practical purposes, it's immortal. So knowing yourself as this being is tremendously helpful in living a more wonderful human life. In fact, Next, we're going to invite it to join us in the body, which is even more wonderful than floating in an out-of-body. <laughs> so before we do this, I have to give you the standard uh, you know, information, which is you, the ego, the best way to describe this is a metaphor of driving a car. So instead of you, the ego, driving the car, you're going to slide to the passenger seat and the divine's going to drive. If at any point you don't like the way your divine is driving, you can scoot back over, take the wheel, the divine will step out immediately with no fuss, and you will be driving the car again. And actually, it happens instantly. The moment your ego wants control back, it's done. The divine's out, you're in. So I want you, the ego, to know that you're safe. For some people, this is a little bit scary the first time. So know that if you don't like the result of what you do, you've got your old status quo back immediately. So there's no risk. It's just an experiment. Um, I've already verbalized earlier in this call the benefits of doing this. I'll recap them just super brief. Uh, more harmony, flow, ease, and grace. Everything you're responsible for, you do more responsibly and joyfully. Instead of having to figure things out so much, you just know what to do and more bliss overall. So if you would like to have that experience, just try it on for size, see if you like it or not. Then we're going to do the, the third invocation to bring the light body into the physical form. So if you'd like to do this, then repeat after me now. Spirit that I am, please integrate my peaceful light body and my physical body to the greatest extent that serves highest good. Starting now, thank you this or something better. Let the words go. And now we're back in the body, so it's back to breath awareness. So I invite you to return your attention to feeling the breath wherever in your body you feel it most easily. And no breath control, no trying to make anything happen. Just feel breath passively. When you notice distraction, just return to breath very gently, no resisting anything, just back to breath, back to breath. And the more passive you stay, the easier you make it for your higher self to do this for you. I make such a big deal out of the passivity because if you start trying to help in any way to make this happen, you've invoked free will, your higher self will be required by divine law to stop what it's doing and step back and let you try to do it on your own. However, there is no ego on the planet that can do this for itself. 
only the higher self can do it for the ego. So if you want this, just acknowledge, hey, my ego, it's above my pay grade. I can't do this from my own human part. The divine has to do it for me. I can request it. And then the more passive I stay, the easier it's going to be for the divine to give that to me as a gift. And it's so happy to do this every time you ask. There's nothing it would rather do. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you are feeling a little bit of challenge. Uh, sometimes when the light body comes in, it hits a block area where there's some like old emotional pain or something. And so some of you are having a little bit of challenging emotion come up and you may also be noticing it's flushing out like your hands or your feet. So allow that please, if it's happening, that is for you a prerequisite for the light body to come fully in. Not everyone has that happen, but some are having it right now. So just allow that, stay in the breath passively, no matter what's happening. And some of you are already there. Some of you are in your embodied awakening. Your job, folks, is to hold space for the rest. So I'm holding the space. You're holding the space. The more of us who hold this embodied awakening right now, the easier it's going to be for everyone else to catch up and join us in this beautiful space. So, so everyone who's there, you're now part of the facilitation team. So just hold the awakening. Just relax into that. And the more of us who do it, the quicker everyone else will pop in. Yeah, it's cascading really nicely. Most people are there. Let's give it just a moment longer. Again, all you do to get here is you be completely passive. Feel breath come and go. That is all. The divine will take care of everything else while you do that. Okay, uh, enough of us are here that we can move forward. Some will be playing catch up in the next minute or two. So let's check our embodied awakening. I'm going to run the checklist. So just note yes or no to yourself on each question. Do you have full awareness of your physical body? Do you feel that peaceful light body? Can you feel both bodies at the same time? Are the light body and the physical body so integrated that it's hard to tell them apart? At this moment, is there any mental chatter or challenging emotion? Are you peaceful? And the last parameter is it's happening with no effort. So let's all drop zero effort. Don't even try to hold breath. Just be for a moment. Totally passive, not trying to do anything at all. And in that completely passive state, is it true that there's no mental chatter, no challenging emotion, and that it's peaceful? If that is true with zero effort, then you have achieved embodied awakening. Great job. If not, then uh, you may catch up in the next minute or two, or you can try this again later. Because sometimes, you know, for some folks, it takes a time or two to get it but many people get it the first time. So just relax into this for a moment. And if this is your first time here, it is extraordinary to be sitting there fully conscious and that chatter and challenging emotion you've had your whole life, it feels weird to have them gone. It's like, whoa, so empty here. And yet you'll notice if you actually just relax into it, the emptiness feels really good. It's so peaceful and there's some bliss in there. So just relax. So um, what's happening here is the consciousness of the higher self in embodied awakening is the operating system of the body. It is the driver. So when the higher self merges, then it's the consciousness driving the body. Now you still have access to all the body stuff. You can still think, you can still emote, you still have all your memories. It's all still there. But what's missing is the static, the, the distracting, pointless, unnecessary thoughts and emotions are not there anymore. But again, all the capacities you need are still present. Nothing is lost that you need. So just feel that for a moment. And the next stage, we're still in process, is open your eyes and look around and engage visually with the space around you. And as you do this, just notice, am I still in embodied awakening? The answer to that question involves the four things being simultaneously true. No mental chatter, no challenging emotion, peaceful, effortless, and judging. By the way, Alara's eyes look, you are totally there, aren't you? <laughs> so 
and I always tell them I love you. <laughs> How do you feel? Wow. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome. Cool. All right. So, so now I'm still in process. I just wanted to check in with you. Um, what I'd like to do briefly is give the follow-up instructions. And let me first note that all these are in writing on my website, astroshaman.com. Right now, uh, the current version of the website, you would go on the menu bar to resources, the last word up there, and the first pull down is invocations for our Heal and Awaken invocations. Now, I'll have a new site up in a few weeks where invocations will actually be right there on the menu bar. It'll be even easier to get to, but one way or the other, you'll be able to find that. Um, so there, uh, in far greater detail than I'll give now, is, is full detail on how to do this. It'll have the healing invocation too, which we're not gonna go through today, but I've described well enough that you have a sense of what it is. But here's, here's the simplest way, the fewest words possible to tell you how to do this every day. Again, more detail on the website if you wanna go look there. And all that stuff is free up there too. So first thing each morning, do not the cycle we just did, but do an eight word shortcut. It's called the Embodied Awakening Refresher, Year. The words are maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good please. Just as soon as possible each morning, the moment you think about them, I don't care if you're laying in bed, sitting on the toilet, whatever, just say maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good please. Rest in passive breath awareness and the embodied awakening will return. I've had many people give me feedback that say it takes about five or 10 seconds. It can be very, very quick. Basically, once you get fully relaxed into passive breath awareness, it's there. So the way you know there, again, four parameters, no mental chatter, no challenging emotion, peaceful, effortless. You're there, good, go about your business. Now it may last all day or it may not. If it slips during the day and the mental chatter and challenging emotion come back, just do it again. Repeat as needed. If you can't do it out loud because there's people around, do it mentally, if thinking it will do it just as well. And uh, the thinking the words and the resting and passive breath awareness can be done very subtly. People can be looking right at you and never even know you're doing anything. You can do a stealth invocation, all right? But my advice is do it the moment you realize it's gone. Do not wait. Your higher self will make sure you're safe and I would just call it back on the spot. You don't wanna leave this state for any length of time because if you let it go without it too long, you might slip back into amnesia and even forget you can do this, okay? This is designed to get you out of the amnesia of humanity and uh, be an awakened being. So first thing in the morning, repeat as needed, do it again when you go to bed. That's how to maintain the awakening. Now, as I said earlier in our discussion that the layers of the onion will come up to be peeled. You're gonna get triggered. Something's gonna happen with a challenging emotion or a challenging sensation. When that happens, you pull out the other invocation, the healing invocation. You say, okay, I've got a challenge somewhere. I say the words maximum healing, that serves highest good, please. I rest in passive breath, and the divine comes in, stirs it up, and flushes it out. As we said earlier, there is a refinement. If it's super intense in one area, then you just put your attention there and hold witness to it. Feel it fully. So again, that's a little more technical than I want to get into here, but it's on the website. When you click that place on, the, on my menu bar, then you get two posts. The first right now has a blue angel, and it's mainly about the awakening. The second post has a screaming man. It says, your negative reactions, golden opportunities for clearing and awakening. It describes the healing process in detail. So those two tools, <clears throat> again, I've been giving these tools out for over seven years. Uh, literally thousands of people have done them. I've received hundreds of emails testifying to their effectiveness. So it's a field tested system, not just someone's theory. So you, you know, chances are it'll work for you. If not, then go find something that works better. But if you're called to it, try it out, test it for yourself. If it works, keep using it, and keep using it is my recommendation, unless you already have something better or something better comes along with it. And that's the most concise I can give the instructions. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I'm still um, in it, you know, and it's like I would just like to stay in it, you know. Um, just absolutely beautiful. Wow. <laughs> so I... Yeah, it was, uh, oh, that's so, that's so cool. Caroline says, I had brown eyes, now I have greenish eyes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, in fact, if, if you all who felt the change, if you look at yourself in your monitor or your mirror, you don't look the same. You actually, you look younger. The, mm. It literally takes wrinkles off your face, it puts new light in the eyes. 
this, you ladies, this is the best beauty treatment I know. <laughs> you get awakening and you look so much younger. The most radical shift I saw was a 70 year old woman who went to India and woke up, came back. She looked 70 when she left, she came back. She looked like she was maybe 45. I couldn't wow. believe the, the youth effect of her awakening. It was amazing. So, so there's a little, little uh, additional motivation for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. This was this was yeah. really, really um, so nice, you know. And it's it's and it's so easy to do, you know. And that's mm -hmm. a, that that's the thing that I, you know, like it was maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes. I've no I have no idea. I, I lost track of time. But it's very easy for anybody to do. So that's what I I, I love that, you know. And so try it out, right? All of you, mm -hmm. you know, who are watching now or watching later, try it out on your own, or go back and watch this person again. Mm -hmm. um and and do it for a couple of days and just see how you feel okay yeah, yeah and again i want to emphasize again you know Experiment. what i just did was just to get it rolling but when you actually do it on your own all you need is the eight word refresher you do not have to do the cycle right yeah and uh, and on my ease program that i mentioned uh we do a process like this every month we have weekly calls and once a month we do this juiced up with shamanic awakening stuff so awesome. um <laughs> if it's up there available too. Awesome. Thank you. So um, we do, our Benjamin does have an offer that he'd like to share with you. So for those of you who are on the live page, you can just click on special offer. And those of you who are not on the live page and you're watching on somewhere, there's a link. <laughs> just click on the link. So I, because uh, it's, it's long to talk about, but it's laura.at forward slash show forward slash Benjamin. So Benjamin, I'm going to ask you to talk about it and I will screen share some of it so that people can okay. see it as well. Sweet. Okay, good. So I'll, I'll be very brief in describing this. Uh, the first package contains six MP3s from my weekly program. And this is, I picked kind of a best of selection of the most recent work. So it's about 10 hours of audio. Um, and the mm -hmm. whole package is 97 bucks. And, um, the let me just i'm trying to for some reason my scroll down isn't work there you go i just okay, bear with me yourself i need to feel there i'm i'm good now i can scroll my own screen now okay yeah i just have to like it, it never works properly when i try and screen share because when you're talking it doesn't show it so it's like what uh okay so mm -hmm. i'm now just on my own web page directly looking at it so hopefully what i'm doing is not interfering with you no so. um but i'm going to share it now so okay, cool. okay. Yeah. All right, so package B has double 12 MP3s, twice as many, and it's 147. And uh, so basically, um, just to briefly cover the content, um, the package A first starts with a shamanic awakening ceremony over two hours long, where we're going to do the awakening, we're going to shake out the stuff you need to clear. Um, there's an all one process, about an hour and a half. Um, this, I, I don't know how to describe it, I was one with everything and many of the callers felt the same thing. So it's a new level of unity experience beyond what you may have experienced before. Um, the third one is called Short and Sweet. It's only an hour long, but um, it has a little Q&A um, and we have a spontaneous guided meditation includes embodied awakening, personal healing, merged awareness in the inner worlds. It's a really sweet, and it, what's nice is most of the recordings are longer than this, so this is one you can do in a very, relatively brief time. Um, then there's one called Blissages, which combines the word bliss and messages. So there is some channeling here, and then a lovely guided meditation as well uh, that has awakening, healing, inner world blending, divine ecstasy. Um, the reason that my descriptions tend to be similar on the inner processes is we're not doing a lower world experience where it's like shamanic animals and a lot of, you know, scenery. We're in the upper world where it's more abstract, mm -hmm. but really ecstatic. So that's why, you know, I may be more broadly generalizing. Plus the fact that a lot of people have unique experiences and they're experiencing something other than what I'm describing. And then their experience for them is even more wonderful than what I'm describing. So the calls are amazing because you can do the same MP3 over and over again and have a different experience each time. So it really, you know, however many you purchase, six or 12, it actually opens you to an infinite variety of experience because you literally will have a different experience every time you listen. There's one called Brain Gain where we get some major brain upgrades. I'm, I'm just really 
just highlighting very quickly. Uh, the sixth in the package is called Collective Karma Cleanup. Uh, Alma the Hugging Saint comes in to support us and we clean up not only some of our own stuff, but we work to clear some of the collective karma. So if you wanted to be of global service, that's a sweet package. <clears throat> so again, those six, about 10 hours of audio just for $97. Then the second package, I'm not gonna go blow by blow here, but the, the content of the second group includes how to reclaim soul fragments, how to deal with psychic attacks, uh, lots of ecstatic inner states, how to work with energetic sensitivity, uh, ideas about the new golden age. Amma the Hugging Saint is a pretty prominent presence in some of these recordings. So if you're aware of her, her presence is quite vivid on the calls. Um, Ascended Ayahuasca is energized there. And uh, if you don't know what Ayahuasca is, it's a powerful plant spirit medicine. It is uh, psychotropic. You do move into altered states. What we work with <clears throat> is not the Ayahuasca energy on this planet, much of which has dark stuff mixed in, we work actually with ascended ayahuasca from the ascended earth that's already there. So it's a kind of a more pure, clean version of ayahuasca energy. Again, you're not going to be taking anything, but you're going to be energetically receiving some of this essence. <clears throat> there will be experiences of multi-point awareness. At one point on one of these calls, I was literally in five places at once. And again, if I'm holding a consciousness, then it's available to everyone else who is, you know, ready to receive that. Um, optimal use of the invocations we've been describing, some stuff on law of attraction. So a lot of really juicy material is on these recordings. And again, I, I tried to price them very reasonably, just 97 for the six CD package, or the six MP3 package, and, and just 147 for the one that has a dozen recordings. So that's the nutshell on what that's all about. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're back. Uh, all right, cool. So yeah, those, those two packages uh, are available, package A or package B. Um, take a look at them, see which one resonates with you. And um, I'm just gonna see what, thank you so much, the website. So the website, let me, let me just type in, in the chat here. So I think it's astroshaman.com. That is my site. If you, if you like, I can type it. I got it, yep, okay. You got it right. <laughs> yeah, so that's where they can go to learn more about my services. That's where they can get the uh, the invocations for healing and awakening. That's where the East program is, um, and all that's available there. Mm -hmm. Good. So there's just a message from Dolores. Uh, she says, "Thank you, Benjamin and Laura. That process was a wonderful acknowledgement of what being in touch with my calm and enlightened self. I'm so grateful to have such a wonderful acknowledgement of the experience of peace. Oh, that's beautiful." Oh. Cool. Yeah, it it was what it yeah it was so peaceful and you can continue you know to experience that more and more for yourself um, by tapping into that experience again by using the short version of the of the process the eight words <laughs> mm -hmm. um, as well so yeah really nice thank you I loved yeah, it let me let me uh, there's one thing I just want to say here at the end here which is um, I'm 58 years old. And I don't look that old for a reason, you know, since I in the recent years have been working so powerfully with these divine energies and waking up more and more, I can literally say that every year I get to the end of the year, I say, wow, the year I just had was the best year of my life so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. As long as you're growing in consciousness, that can always be true. Right. So I'm going to tell you uh, what I want is for y'all to, whether you use my tools or anyone else, or not, I don't care, but do something to keep waking up more deeply. And then your motto, like mine, will become it always gets better than this. Hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And yeah. thank you, everyone, too, for being here live on the call or even if you're watching later on, but being fully present. Thank you for co-creating this space. Thank you for co-creating that, that, that powerful uh, session that we did. It was, uh, yeah, it was so, so nice. And Renessa is saying it was amazing how I perceived the energy and the body together. Nice. Good, good. Yeah. yeah it was, yeah, this it was. works for most people most of the time. So I'm yeah. really glad it was helpful for these folks. You know, and even for myself, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to compare um, because we've done it before, but mm -hmm. I can't compare. I mean, I, you know, all I know is right now how it felt, you know? Mm -hmm. I yeah, think it was. This is not even necessary, really. No, no, but it was amazing. It's still amazing. Good. <laughs> right because you can still tap into it even now you know it doesn't mean just because we stop doing it does not mean it's done right 
Well, no, I mean, most of us, I think, are still there. We're still, if we notice, wow, there's no mental chatter, no challenging emotion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was beautiful. Thank you. And so, yeah, exactly. No need to compare. So I do, I do encourage you all to go take a look at Benjamin's website, astroshaman.com. Um, or take, take a look at some of his services, take a look at uh, his, his blogs and articles and all the stuff on the embodied awakening and the ease processes and so on. Take a look at those, uh, lots of information. And if you would like to get the packages from um, Benjamin, you can, that's available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Benjamin. There's two packages there. And the link to the packages will be they are in my email already, but they'll be in the replay email as well, for sure. And they'll be on the on YouTube and on the podcast as well. So take a look at them. You know, w watch this again or listen to this again and do this process again because it was just absolutely beautiful. And if you do have comments or feedback that you'd like to share about the process for Benjamin, you can send them to me or you can send them to, to Benjamin. I'm sure he would love to, you know, he would appreciate getting those too, right? Yeah, I would love feedback. Yeah, there's a contact page on ashshaman.com where you can email me directly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So thank you again so much, Benjamin. I'm so glad we did this. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was long overdue. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> and, My pleasure. Um, Always. Yeah, so, so lovely. And um, please, like, you know, there were some, you know, some, some moments, you know, for myself during this call that were a bit, you know, personal, right? Um, yeah. but it was something that it wanted to be said. So I'm hoping that that will be of service to some of you. Um, so thank you for allowing me to share and be transparent as, as well <laughs> with my journey. Um, mm -hmm. it has been ch a challenge this year, but I don't foresee it continuing to be a challenge. Right, Benjamin? It can only get yeah. better. Well, I would, I would not go so far as to say there won't be further challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know for myself, I, I don't think it'll be as challenging, you know. Well, I, I, I sincerely hope that's true for you. Yeah, um, exactly. It but, won't be as challenging. What I know is if, if you get these tools, especially the healing tool in your toolkit and you learn to do it, then you'll know I don't care what challenge comes up. I can work with it because my divine can handle anything. Hmm. Oh, that's and beautiful. The, the game is situated. The human experience is set up, in my experience and my understanding, that you do not get more than you can handle. And maybe handling it means that you realize it's not up to your ego and it's up to your divine allies. You've got to call in a higher power to do it. Yes. And that's part <laughs> learning about the higher power and what it can do for you. That's yeah. exactly what I did. It's like I can't do it, so I'm gonna call in. I'm ca I'm gonna call in the big guns, you know. And say, yeah. you know, yeah. and reach out for support. You know, like if 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 you still require more support, you know, apart from the tools that you received today from Benjamin, reach out. You know, reach out to Benjamin. Reach out to myself. Reach out to other um, healers and facilitators. Mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, see what happens. <laughs> Ah, all right, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm still in bliss, you know, and uh, I plan to stay this way for a while. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful. And so until next time, everyone continue to live your life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance and happiness. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now.